bring your glory to God. I just want to share a few minutes what God has placed on my heart. Amen. Thank God for our pastor holding it down for the last two weeks. Amen. Glory to God. I appreciate you, Pastor. I love you. You are a blessing to me. Amen. God is, is raising you up for such a time as this. Is that all right? Amen. He's restoring everything that the enemy tried to steal. Amen. Amen. Notice why I said he tried to steal. Amen. He tried to steal. Yeah. Oh, come on now. He'll make a good attempt. Yeah. He'll give it the old college effort. Yeah, right. But let me tell you something. His plan is for it. Amen. Yeah. What he meant for evil, yeah. come on now, God is what? Yeah. Turning it around. Somebody said he's turning it around. Yeah. And working it for our path is good. Amen. Yeah. He got a testimony that, that's going to bless people who are not people's socks off. Amen. Yeah. Is that all right? The stroke that, that the enemy tried to use against him, God is working for him. He's going to work for somebody else. Oh, hallelujah. I got to slow down. I, I, I want to preach before I preach. Turn with me, if you will, to James chapter 1. I just want to share what the Lord has placed on my heart, amen, to share with you, amen. I, I, I'm glad to see my brother DJ, amen. We were passing this week, and we've been just passing each other, amen, but I've been praying for him, amen, for protection, because he is one of our protectors, amen. He is a police officer, amen, and he needs protection. He's protecting us, but he needs protection. So I continue to pray for him, amen, and I thank God for keeping him safe, amen, and guarding him out there when he don't even see the dangers that the enemy's trying to bring against us. But we are praying, amen. God sees everything, amen. James chapter 1, and I'm going to be reading this out of I'm going to read it from verse 2 to verse 8. I'm reading it in three different um, translations. Glory to God that you get different revelations from different translations. Amen. Is that all right? With the believers today. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 8. Hallelujah. This is what the word of the Lord says. Well, I'm going to pray first. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this word that you have bestowed upon your servant. Father, use me today as a vessel that is anointed and appointed for you for such a time as this to bring forth this word to the hearers of this word. Father, may your anointing fill this place like never, ever before. If there be any distractions or anything that would try to take the believer's minds off the word, may they be removed in Jesus' name. We have the mind of Christ. We have that peace that passes all understanding. We have that peace that settles our spirit today. Father, our eyes are fixed on you. Holy Ghost, have your way. And may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And we ask all these things in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Lift up your Bibles. Let's make our declaration. Let's get our swords out. Hallelujah. I know that You've been swinging this week. I know it ain't been up on the shelf. Go ahead, collect it up. I know I'm talking to somebody here today. Say, this is my Bible. This is, my Bible. This is God's holy word. This is, God's holy word. This, is this is the word of truth. This is the sword of the spirit. This is, the sword of the spirit. This is my, sword. my sword. And I'm dangerous with it. Now give God a break. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the name of Jesus. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 8. It reads like this. It says, my brother, count it all joy. When you fall into various trials, knowing, somebody say no, that the testing of your faith produces, somebody say produces, produces. patience. But let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect. So there has to be a perfect work for you to be perfect. And complete, lacking nothing. If any of you, somebody say any of you, who is any of you? That's everybody. Come on now, church. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him or her ask of God, who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. But let him ask what? In faith, with no doubt. For he who doubts is like a wave of sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. The Amplified Version says this, Consider it nothing but joy. My brothers and sisters, whenever you fall into various trials, be assured that the testing 
of your faith through experience produces endurance, leading to spiritual maturity and inner peace. And let endurance have its perfect result and do a thorough work so that you may be perfect and completely developed in your faith, lacking nothing. If any of you lacks wisdom to guide him through a decision or a circumstance, he is to ask of our benevolent God who gives to everyone generously and without rebuke or blame, and it will be given to him. But he must ask for wisdom in faith, without doubting, God's willingness to help. For the one who doubts is like a billowing surge of the sea that is blown about, tossed by the wind. For such a person ought not to think or expect that he or she will receive anything at all from the Lord. Being double-minded, unstable, and restless in all his ways. In everything he thinks, feel or desire. And then finally in the New Living Translation it says this, Dear brothers and sisters, when trouble of any kind come your way, consider it an opportunity. Somebody say it's an opportunity. <laughs> for great joy. For you know that when your faith is tested, that word tested, I keep hearing that tested word, your endurance has a chance to grow. And verse 4 says, let it grow. So let it grow. When your endurance is fully developed, you will be perfect and complete, needing nothing. If you need wisdom, and we all need wisdom, if I'm talking to somebody here today, ask our generous God, and he will give it to you. He will not rebuke you for asking, but when you ask him, be sure that your faith is in God alone. Do not waver. For a person with divided loyalty is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is blown and tossed by the wind. Such people should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Their loyalty is divided between God and the world. And they are unstable in everything they do. So the title of my message today is, So Let It Grow. Somebody say, so let it grow. Somebody say, so let it grow. And the subtitle is, how to deal with wavering faith. I want to ask the question, has anyone's faith ever been tested? I want to see the hands of anyone's faith that's ever. And, and you know what, I'm going to kind of rephrase that. Anybody's faith being tested right now? Oh, come on now, church. I know I'm talking to some people today, and what I believe that there is, there are things that happen when our faith is tested. There are things that come about that when our faith gets tested, sometimes we don't even understand what's going on in the test. And, and I think that's what our uncertainty sometimes causes our faith to waver. It's the uncertainty, it, especially when there's a waiting period. Or sometimes in that waiting period, it seems like one thing after the next thing, after the next thing, after the next thing. Am I, am I, am I talking to somebody in this church today? Somebody's faith that's being tested. And my faith lately has been tested. And I, and I was talking to the Lord, and God revealed something to me in this scripture right here. And, and what he asked, there was a question, that, and what the question was is, how do you respond when God doesn't answer your prayer? How do you respond? What do you do while you're waiting to hear a response? When things seem like they are just out of control, you're in a boat, and it seems like the boat is going down. Just like the disciples were when they were in the boat with Jesus, they were worried about going under. Does your faith waver if God doesn't provide what you requested in the time that you expected it. Well, come on now, I'm talking to somebody. Does your faith begin to waver if you're praying and believing God for something and it doesn't happen right away? What do you do? Just when I was praying for my father-in-law, it seemed like things were getting a little haywire. It seemed like things were, and what the things were doing, it was trying to get my faith to waver. It was trying to get my mother-in-law's faith to waver. What do you do? Although it seems, it may seem that the problems of fluctuating faith result in unanswered prayers. It's actually caused by misunderstanding what God is doing in your life. 
God is doing some things that you don't even see. God is working things out behind the scenes that you don't even know about. Come on, church. And we see that the book of James here, and we see this book of James tackles the issues of doubting by first addressing what God's purpose is in the trial. And this is what he says. He says, consider it all joy. Somebody say all joy. He didn't say some things joy. He didn't say consider when things are going well joy. He said consider what? It all joy. My brother, when you encounter trials or various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance. Sometimes God doesn't immediately give us the relief that we're looking for. But he's using that particular situation to produce something inside of us. There is something inside of us that he sees that's getting ready to come out. And we hear our pastor say that faith that can't be tested can't be trusted. So that means that God is testing your faith. He knows that he can trust it. Oh, I'm talking to somebody here today. See, he, there is something that God is working out. He's trying to, that particular trial is trying to produce something inside of us. That's why I said, so let it grow. Somebody say, let it grow. Let it grow. Then he tells us what to do. He tells us what to do. He says, and let endurance have its perfect result so that you may be perfect. So there has to be something perfect in order to make you perfect. Right. We're not perfect. Mm -hmm. The situation that we're going through is not a perfect situation. Mm -hmm. But God is perfecting that which concerns you. Mm -hmm. All right. He is working a per He is working in this imperfect thing, working out all of the imperfections while he's perfecting you. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm talking to somebody in this church today. God is working in He says, you'll, you'll be complete, lacking nothing. But if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously without reproach. And what? It will be given to him. But he must ask in faith. That is the key. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So that's why the man of God said we must have faith when we're asking for wisdom. But without, without faith, without any doubt, for one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. But that man ought not to expect that he will receive anything from the Lord. He's double-minded. One minute I believe the Lord, next minute I believe the world. One minute, God, you can do it all. Next minute, I guess I need you. Oh, come on now, church. Y'all know y'all been there before. One minute, Lord, you are my rock. Next minute, I don't know if I'm going to make it. Come on now. You waver in between. The one minute you trust in him, the next minute, you know what? Maybe I need to figure this thing out. That is wavering. That's going back and forth. You've never seen waves being blown by the wind. It goes back and forth. That's what the man of God is speaking of. It is when we believe God in one voice and then lose our trust in the next minute. You can't believe that you're going to receive anything because you're double-minded. God wants us to come to him with our request, trusting that he hears us. However, if he doesn't answer it immediately, it's not because he doesn't care. His purpose are always accomplished according to his timing and not ours. Stop looking at your watch. Turn to your neighbor and say, stop looking at your watch. But we have a tendency to look at what? What time is it? God, you want to be here in the next five minutes. Lord, I'm going to need you in the next half an hour. Lord, I'm going to set my stopwatch for 30 minutes. I'm going to need you to be, throw your stopwatch out. Because this time is not your time. Oh, come on now, church. Hallelujah. He, he, he is the author of time. Amen? Is that all right? Hallelujah. He may answer in a different manner or a later date than we expected. Oh, come on now, church. Hallelujah. I was expecting, amen, when I when I first heard that I was going to be laid off, I was expecting that next week to hear about a job. I didn't hear anything. So I just kept waiting, and I kept walking. Oh, come on now. And as the longer that I walked, the more the enemy kept telling me, you know what, you're not going to get a job. You know what, you're going to be on unemployment. Y'all, how are you going to support your children and your wife being on unemployment? How are you going to you know, support them without a job. He kept telling me that all the time I was waiting. Oh, come on now. Because the devil will tell you stuff while you're waiting. And if you listen and entertain it, it'll get into your system. I'm not talking to somebody here today. See, but but what happens is, is you know, uh, uh, Lord of God, is that uh, even when we don't see
see the evidence of it, we must wait and trust in God. Realizing that he is still at work. Amen? And James said this in verse 6. He said, when we doubt the Lord, we are like the surf of the sea. Driven and tossed by the wind. Going this way and that way. One minute, we're confidently trusting God. Then the next minute, if he doesn't answer, answer right away, we're trying to figure things out. Oh, come on now. Hallelujah. That's what he said. Tossed and driven. Perhaps we'll only believe him if he gives us a little encouragement along the way. Or sometimes we fuss and argue with the Lord, thinking that that will motivate him to answer faster. God, I need you to come right now. Lord, I don't understand. Sometimes we think like God is like a delivery person. Like we can set up an order and he'll come as soon as we make that delivery. Like we got an app on the phone that delivers us food now. It's called DoorDash. And my daughter Lauren is in love with DoorDash. We, we treat God like DoorDash. When we pull up an order and have them delivered. Lord, I need some fried chicken and some collard greens and some black eyed peas and I need it in a half an hour. You can't treat God like that. God is bigger than that. Amen. And when his timing is the right time, amen. His timing is the perfect timing. Amen. Hallelujah. We can't treat God like that. And that's what happens is we begin to have this discussion with God. And sometimes we get frustrated. And out of our frustration, we say negative things. Anybody ever said something negative out of frustration? Oh, come on now. I've said it many times when I, 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 the thing didn't happen right away. I can't believe God is doing it. Then I caught myself. Wait a minute. God is a, he's bigger than that. He's bigger than my situation, what's going on right here. And I have no idea what he's doing behind the scenes. Am I talking to somebody here today? We say those things because our faith in those winning people begin, and, and that's when doubts come in. But all of our doubts simply reveal that what? We're in peace. It reveals that we're impatient. We are a very impatient society. We want things done right now, right now. Lord, I need it right now. Lord, as soon as I hear it, I need it right now. Lord, I need, even the microwave is not fast enough for us. We need watching and pacing. Sometimes I find myself pacing when I'm cooking something, I'm looking at the microwave, I'm looking like, what is this going to be done? I'm going to need this stuff back. But let me tell you, when you rush something, it'll never cook right. Oh, come on now. You can take it out and it's still cold. I was cooking some rice the other day and I couldn't wait. I was like, oh, this is good enough. And it was still cold. Anybody ever eat cold rice? It's straight up nasty. And that's what happens with us. When we're impatient, we get nasty stuff. We get stuff that is not fully cooked or fully developed. Somebody say, so let it grow. We don't know God's will. Or we're not yet ready to receive his answer. We got to wait. Somebody say you got to wait. Hallelujah. Whenever God delays in responding to our prayers, he's teaching us to consistently trust, first of all, and to believe him. Not because we see the answer, but because he's promised to hear and answer our prayers. When doubts arise because God's delay is due to our lack of trust in Him or our lack of care. It's not, it's due to our lack of trust in Him, not to a lack of care or ability on God's part. Our lack of trust has nothing to do with God's power. Our impatience doesn't, it doesn't have to do with anything with God's ability to answer your prayer. Oh, come on now. And we think that. In, in our minds is that when he's not answering, something must be wrong with him. <laughs> when the whole issue is that we got to trust and believe. Now, am I talking to somebody here today? Somebody say, so let it grow. <laughs> so the question is, what causes our faith to waver? What causes us in those moments between the times that we're praying and to the time we get our breakthrough that causes us to be back and forth? What causes us to one day say, I, I, I trust you, Lord, and the next day, mm, Lord, I, I don't know. Things are going a little bit different than what I thought. What, in that in-between time, what causes your faith to waver? The first thing is we choose to rely on our feelings rather than the word of God. We choose rather to go with our emotions, which are unstable, than standing on the stability of the word of God or the word of truth. Because the word will tell us different than what our feelings say. Oh, come on now. We are very emotional at times. We are emotional Christians. We go on our emotions instead of trusting in the word of God. If we shift our focus 
from the promises of his word, amen, we see his word, to our feelings, our faith will become unstable. We'll be going back and forth. If, if, because one day you can feel like coming to church, and maybe you don't. Right. Come on now. Some mornings I get up, I'm like, man, I don't want to get out of this bed. I'm nice and comfy in here. And the devil say, you know what, go ahead and stand. You don't need to, you don't need to work. Yes, I do. Come on now. If you, if you go by your feelings, your feelings will mislead you. Your feelings will tell you something that's going on that's not even going on. Right. Come on now. My feelings will tell me that. You know, my father-in-law, he could be into a situation where he might not make it. But my faith said he's going to make it. My faith said he's stronger with me than he is with you. Oh, come on. Now, my faith told me that God is God is working behind the scenes when a doctor can't even see. But see, we focus on our emotions, and our emotions have us going back and forth. But when our faith is grounded in the work, we never have to question what God says because we stand on the truth. Yeah. When our faith is in that word, there is nothing that can shake it. All the while I was being getting ready to be laid off, I never let the word of truth come out, depart from my mouth. Yeah. I kept speaking, I will get a job. Even though all around me was doom and gloom. Yeah. I mean, I've never seen such depression happen in, in, in such a wide array. But all the while in the midst, I never let the word of truth leave my mouth. I said, I will not be without a job. I will not be without a paycheck. I will not have to go on unemployment. I will go directly to another job. I kept preaching. Even, even the people in this church kept speaking that word. Even as I was greeting people back there, they kept, you guys kept encouraging me. And I thank you for that. I thank you for your faith. Because when, even when I was not feeling right, you guys kept praying for through. That's what faith is. Faith is contagious. It's when one person is feeling down, everybody else picks them up. That's what God, that's real family, amen. And I want to thank you for that, amen. I want to thank you for when I was standing back here, give God some praise. When I was standing back there, and when I was unsure, you were sure for me. You would hug me and say, you about to get another job. Oh, come on, church. I, I'm talking to somebody. That's what faith is. Faith is contagious. It's when somebody's down, your faith picks them up. And then I got charged up. And I began to speak to you guys. Oh, come on. That, that's what faith is all about. Hallelujah. It's when you're wavering, that's when you believe, i got to stand on the word of truth. Don't go by your feelings. Go by the word of truth. Number two, we yield to reason rather than believing in God. We reason with our human reasoning. Human reasoning and faith are not always compatible. Most of the time, they're not compatible. Am I talking to somebody here that we may have all kinds of good reasons for making a particular request to God, but he sees more of the situation than we do. Right. He sees the end from the beginning. He is the Alpha and the Omega. Am I talking to somebody here today? He sees more of the situation than we do. And if the Lord delays in his answering, he has a divine reason. Somebody said he has a divine reason. Yeah. That is good, legitimate, and helpful. That's why he says, I know the I know the thoughts. I know. You don't know. Never in that scripture did it say you know. Never did God say you know the plan. Oh, come on now. Because he know better than to say something like that. Because we come up with all kinds of air free, air gray schemes. Come on now. We come up with schemes out of the blue. And God's just like, you know what? I know the plans I have here. You. you know what? It's very cute, your scheme, your plan. But let me tell you something. It's time to take my plan. Just like you tell our kids come up with something crazy, we don't want to make them feel bad, that's so cute, you know, give them a hug, but then our mind, we're like, there ain't no way that's ever happened. Come on now. Come on now. That was God, and God said, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. So why are we going to everybody else except for going to God? We're yielding to our reason instead of saying, wait a minute, God is the one who has the right plan for me. Am I talking to somebody here today? His plan, he has a divine reason that is good and helpful. Jeremiah 17, verse 7 to 8. Verse 7 says, But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is what? In him. When your confidence is in the Lord, you are blessed. When your faith is in the Lord, you are blessed. Come on now. Then it says, I love it. He will be like what? A tree that's planted by the water. And it says his roots will go out and be nourished. And then I love this part right here. It says, when the heat comes, 
its leaves are always green. It has no worries in a year of drought and never fails to bear fruit. That's what God is all about right there. When you trust in the Lord and your roots go deep into this into this spiritual water right here, you will never fall short. You will always be green. Amen? Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord. Not in your own reasoning, but in the Lord. Somebody say, so let it grow. Let it grow. Number three, we fail to see God at work in our circumstances. We see the circumstances, but we don't see God. Oh, come on now. We got to open up our spiritual eyes. That's what I always say when I pray. Open up my spiritual understanding so I'll see beyond what I can see. See, we're always seeing the situation, and we talk the situation, but we don't see God behind the situation. Oh, come on now. We don't see God above the situation. Glory to God. God is above it all. Amen? And, 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 and. You know, that we fail to see that God is behind the scenes. If the Lord doesn't change our circumstances, it's because he's using them to bring us to maturity. Oh, come on, I'm talking to somebody. His primary purpose is not to give us everything we desire, but to shape us into the image of his son. That's what God is doing. He's working out all of the kink. Everything that's not like him, this pressure, this thing that's coming on you is getting you right. Yeah. It's working out everything that's not like you. It's causing you to talk better. Yeah. It's causing you to pray better. Yeah. Am I talking to somebody? It's building up faith in you so that you can stand in the day of adversity. Yeah. I I'm talking to somebody in this church today. Yeah. Hallelujah. He's shaping you into the image of his son. And he knows the perfect way to accomplish that. Knowing his good purpose frees us from worry and doubt. And it allows us to relax. Somebody say relax. We don't relax enough, amen. But I tell you, when you can trust in the Lord, that's when you can really relax. Am I talking to somebody? And wait patiently for the Lord to accomplish what he desires in our life. That's why I said, for you know that when your faith is what tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. Somebody say, so let it grow. So let it grow. If, if that's what God is doing to you, let it grow. Don't, don't, don't get upset that you're going through this situation. Let your endurance grow. Let, your, let God perfect that what's inside of you because he sees that thing that's trying to come out of you. The devil wants to hold it down, but God say, I want that thing to grow inside of you. I want your faith to grow. I want your prayer to grow. I want you to stand stronger than you ever had. So when the enemy attacks, you'll be able to stand. So let it grow. Let it grow. Your endurance. We like to, we don't like to wait for things. Endurance is sometimes you gotta go through something. It's not just a quick sprint. It's a long race. Amen. So we need endurance. So let it grow. And when your endurance is what? Fully developed, you will be what? Perfect. Oh, thank you, Lord. And complete needing nothing. There will be no lack when you can wait on the Lord. When you allow God to work out every detail behind the scenes that you can't even see. But he is working out so that you'll be complete needing nothing. Number four. We fail to see, we, we listen to negative counsel of other people. Let me tell you something. Everybody that tell you something ain't telling you something. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let me say that again. Everybody that's telling you something ain't telling you something. Because everybody got an opinion out here. If you look on social media, everybody is a self-help guru. Let me help you with this. Let me help you lose weight. Let me help you get money. Let me help you. And you know what I want to say? You need to help yourself. Oh, come on now. The biggest people offering the most help got the biggest problem. Oh, come on now. They're hiding behind it. Let me help you out. It, you know what? The only help you can get is from the Lord. Uh, yeah, they're not here today. Now, okay, how many self-help things you can read? How many books you can look at? Let me tell you, this is the best self-help book ever, which is the word of truth. If you want to get better self-esteem, find out who you are in Jesus. I, I, I'm talking to somebody here today. Come on now. We got to stop listening to counsel because everybody will counsel you. As soon as you open up saying you got a problem, oh, I got an answer for you. Oh, come on now. They're like kids in school. They're jumping up. Oh, I got an answer for you. No, you don't. Jesus is the answer. And unless you're walking in faith, unless you're walking in the Word, and you're hearing from the Spirit, you don't have any advice for me. Oh, come on now. We 
we got to be very selective on the people that we allow to speak into our spirit. Because everybody ain't operating in the spirit of truth. They operate in the spirit of themselves. Come on now. And they think they'll try to put something on you that ain't even on you. You got to be careful who you listen to. I, I, I really, I'm, especially the body of Christ, you got to be careful. you got to be making sure that this is coming from, is this a word from the Lord or is this a word from you? Is this a word from the book of James or is this a word from the book of Nicodemus? Come on now. Tell me what book you, you talk about. Because if you talk from that, from the book of Nicodemus, you can't talk to me. But if you talk from the word of truth, if, you know, if your word is counted all joy, then I want to hear what you got to say. If your word is, let your faith be tested so it can be trusted, then I want to hear from you. You got to be careful. I need to tell some truth here today. We'll remember a whole lot of foolishness. But the stuff, the stuff we need to remember, we can't remember. Come on now. So we need to forget the former thing. That's the thing we need to forget. All those past mistakes, all those shortcomings, all the mistakes we made in foolishness when we weren't walking in the spirit. Forget those things. Come on now. God said forget those things. Do not dwell on the past. Somebody say let it go. Because the past will try to affect your future. And it will if you let it. Come on now church. Let it go. And do not dwell on the past. See what? I am doing what? A new thing. Oh, somebody say a new thing. Oh, come on. Somebody say a new thing. We've been hanging on to a lot of old stuff. God said, let, let that go. Come on, I'm trying to give you something new, and you're still hanging on to the old. You're still thinking old. You're still talking old. Let that stuff go. I'm doing something new. Somebody say, God is doing something new. I see it in Victory Fellowship. Oh, come on now. I see the new in Victory Fellowship. I see it in the smile on everybody's face, what God is doing. God is turning things around. Amen? That's the kind of God we serve. He said, now we're springing up. Do you not perceive it? Do you not see it? I am making a way in the wilderness. Streams in the wasteland. God is making a way. Let that pass go so God can do something new. When you realize God is doing something new, that will strengthen your faith. So the question is, as we close, so how do we conquer our wavering faith? We conquer it by getting wisdom through the word and having our understanding enlightened in the word of truth. It is not by mistake that James talked about uh, letting your patience grow, having endurance, and then he talked about wisdom. He went right into wisdom because in order for us to understand what's going on, we got to have spiritual wisdom. Come on now. That's why he said, if any of you lack, he said, all right, your, your, your patience has to grow. You have to have endurance. Count it all joy. But to understand this, if you're missing something, if you're missing that thing that you need to understand, ask me. Oh, come on now. If you need wisdom, it says if you need wisdom, in the New Living Translation, ask our what generous God. That means when somebody's generous, that means you give a, they give you a lot of stuff. Oh, come on now. If you're a generous father, you give your kids a lot of stuff. If you're a generous person, you give a lot. So we serve a generous God. Oh, come on now. And he knows that we need a lot of wisdom. So if he's generous and we ask him, he's going to give us a lot. But you got to ask him. Come on now. He says, if you need it, and let me tell you something. I need, how many people need wisdom in here? I put up my feet if I didn't fall on the ground. I need wisdom. Come on now. We need wisdom. He said, if you lack wisdom, if you need wisdom, ask our generous God what happened. He will give it to you. In the Message Bible, I love this translation. It says, if you don't know what you're doing, Pray to the Father. If you don't know what you're doing, pray to the Father. Don't act like you know what you're doing when you don't know what you're doing. Am I talking to somebody here today? Don't act like you know what you're doing. You better ask God for some wisdom. The Amplified Version, I love this version. It says, if any of you lacks wisdom to guide him through a decision or a circumstance, this is what you got to do. He has to ask of our benevolent God. Ask him and he'll give you wisdom. Wisdom is your guide to understanding your situation. You will never understand your situation without spiritual wisdom. You will continue to rationalize it, continue to go on your emotions, continue to listen to other people until you get good, godly wisdom. 
That's why James said this. He said, none of this will work if you don't ask for wisdom because wisdom will tell you what's really going on. To understand, to understand what God is doing in your situation and what he's doing in you while you're in your situation. That's what wisdom will do. Proverbs 4, verse 7 says this. Wisdom is the what? Principle. Principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. You, you will understand what's going on when you get wisdom. Because it says, wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, what? Get wisdom and with all thy getting what? Get understanding. Get understanding. So your wisdom will help you to understand. Your wisdom will tell you, God is working behind the scenes. Your wisdom will tell you, they say I'm getting laid off, but wisdom is telling me that my next job is waiting for me. Oh, I'm, I'm talking to somebody here. Wisdom will tell you something that you can't even see. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom will tell you things that no one else will tell you. Oh, come on now. I'm, I'm talking to somebody here. Wisdom will tell you that something no one else will ever tell you. Psalm 138, 8 says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Wisdom will say, God is making me perfect. Oh, come on now. Wisdom will say, God is working out all the kinks, all of the things behind the scenes. He is perfecting that which concerns me. That's what wisdom is telling you. And finally, wisdom is also telling you this. When your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. Endurance. So let it grow. Your, your faith is wrong. Your wisdom is wrong. Which leads you to endurance. Which leads you to more faith. Which brings you to more wisdom. Somebody say, let it grow. Let now stand it grow. up and give God a praise. Come on, church. Give God a worship. Come on, church.